Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Today, we're gonna to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. We're gonna work our way through the dollar yields, precious metals and the commodities and ETFs that I follow. If you hear any background noise, they are changing out my roof shingles. So there might be a little bit of noise in the background. If you hear some shooting of nails or something. Um, so I'm gonna give you my financial opinions as we go through this. Uh, check out finding-value.com. If you need any help with anything, I go through individual companies and stuff like that there. Uh, we still have that 50% coupon code called September. So uh, let's dive in here. I'll let you know my financial opinions on what the charts are saying. So we've got the dollar here, and I think I see a little bit of a, maybe a pattern that, that's coming up here. We've got a little bit of a squeezing up of this pattern here. Uh, which is starting to squeeze up to some degree. We'll see if this pops to the downside. It's not a gigantic pattern, but it doesn't take a gigantic pattern uh, to be a little bit of a topping pattern because it's a it's a rising wedge. Generally, this peaks out and, and drops. And if we get a drop in the dollar, that generally means that we could see a drop in yields. So let's see if that works out uh, with the drop in yields. And again, we could... I mean, rarely this does break to the upside and just accelerates like mad. Uh, that is a possibility. <clears throat> so let's look at let's look at yields. We've got the two-year yield. Now, this is what gets interesting. Last night we had a massive move. I don't know if it was a glitch in the system. I don't know if it was just a massive breakout. Uh, tough to say, but uh, we're break. I mean, we could be breaking this to the upside, which means the dollar actually would be breaking to the upside. Uh, I think if that were to happen, we could see like a blow off move in the dollar. So even though this is a rising wedge and they generally work their way lower, possible we can get a move upward if yields were to explode higher, basically like they already have done uh, post-market um, yesterday, last night is when it happened. The 10-year yield is also up against this resistance area and maybe we break to the upside here uh, the the 30 years got the same type of pattern here we can also see that the lows just keep stepping up into this so let's let's see where yields go here and i know some people say well what's the big deal with yields why does it matter well i mean yields is what prices assets and if we get a very big breakout we could see a big pullback in the overall markets if yields were to explode higher so there is ramifications of yields moving on up in terms of repricing assets and money flows. The TYX TNX ratio, we're still in this pattern right in the tip. And we're at a very low level. So that, that generally works pretty well in favor of where gold, silver, and platinum are. Unfortunately, if we were to move higher in yields, I think this will actually invert further. And that is something we want to watch. Uh, yield curve inversion is generally good for energy <clears throat> and precious metals do not like that as much. Uh, 20 year bond yields or prices, I mean, prices, this looks good to go higher, which means yields are gonna go lower if bond prices go higher. Um, maybe there's something that goes on where the short term goes up and the long term goes down. Maybe. So we are getting some weird information here where yields and prices are kind of conflicting each other. Uh, they're in stark contrast because they move opposite of each other. So you can't have bonds go up and yields go up at the same time. That, that doesn't make any sense. So again, I would take the approach of. Let's wait and see here because things are not aligning. The two and 10 year also is a funky looking chart. A rising wedge generally works its way lower. You would think this would come back and go lower. That didn't happen. We went higher. We are now in a bullish falling wedge. And it looked like we were breaking out of that yesterday with that big move of the two year. So are we going to break to the upside here and get a launch of yields to the upside? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But we're right at the breakout, so it's going to happen probably very soon if something's going to break here. 
next day, probably tomorrow or, or this week for sure. Gold hanging in there. It's actually doing quite well in the face of, I mean, we had a slightly lower dollar and a little bit higher yields or flat yields today. But up about nine bucks an ounce, pretty strong. And this could accelerate if, if the buyers want to come in here and kind of break this little, you know, I mean, you could just kind of draw it like this, break this little pattern here where we break to the upside. Now, we haven't broken out yet. Yields are still trying to figure out where they want to go. Um, <clears throat> I don't see an alignment in yields and bond prices, so it's difficult to make a statement of where I think it's going to go because I just don't know at this time. We'll have to watch and see. Silver up too, um, a little bit, looks good. That's a bullish engulfing last trading session, so it does look like it could go higher. We'll have to see how much oomph is behind the move. And platinum also moving uh, up about nine bucks an ounce. XEU to go ratio, it's hanging in there basically sideways uh, for the most part. And we're still at this very ludicrously cheap level down here for gold and silver mining companies in relationship to gold. The CRB index holding steady today. And again, this looks good for a continued move up. I don't see too much selling pressure here. Uh, the CRB index to S&P 500, slightly lower today, but it still looks good to go higher. Uh, with time. GDX moving sideways up 0.1% right at resistance. We've got GDXJ slightly lower and SILJ slightly lower. Still looks all right, in my opinion. Uh, we're still working on breaking patterns just like silver's doing. So be patient with the gold and silver area. Crude oil uh, sideways. We do have a little bit of pressure, selling pressure here. That's what we're hitting. Um, if we look left, there's a little bit at this area right here, a little bit of um, you know, resistance support all through this section here. So that's basically what we're encountering is that uh, resistance area. Nat gas putting in a big bullish engulfing today. That actually looks very good to go higher. Uh, that's a bullish engulfing right there. Boom, boom. And we'll see if we can get a little bit of a move to the upside for that gas. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, it is pulling on back to that support level, the neckline. The neckline right there. We could even loop back. It's okay. Uh, just be patient. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> OIH up 0.5%. Uh, we're at a pretty high level up here. Not a ton of selling pressure after that big bearish engulfing. Curious to see if we put a big up candlestick right next to this. Uh, I think if interest rates go up, I do think that oil and that gas will go up. I do. We've got the Scrap Fiscal Uranium Trust still, still extending itself to the upside. This momentum is strong. Um, I know a lot of people think that it needs to pull back. They're going to look at relative strength indicators. They're going to look at all that stuff. All I'm going to say is in 2007, the relative strength indicator went off the charts. So I don't use those metrics. I, I don't see much usefulness to them. I understand some people might like it, but uh, this is your big breakout. It's released from that resistance zone and it is running. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to try to time any type of short term market movement on a move that looks like this. You are a um, solid today. Looked like it was going to pull back, but came back and buyers came in and kind of reversed that momentum. So we had a little bit of selling pressure with the wick at the top last trading session. And now we basically have a little bit of momentum going on up with the wick at the bottom here. URNM also doing the same thing. A little bit of buying pressure with the momentum heading to the upside. Not too bad. And URNJ, same exact chart. So we've got selling pressure last session, buying pressure coming up. And we're at some sort of resistance level right where we're at. Tan getting sold off. This does look like it could go lower. That's a pretty strong selling pressure day to day. And we could be going back to that $48.30 level back to this bottom here. Looking at COPX down 1%, but we're still in the channel moving sideways. We've got lithium slightly lower. It's hanging in there though, and it's within the pattern. 
falling wedge. And REMX slightly lower, we're, we're within the pattern, it's a falling channel, and we're just going sideways here at the moment. <clears throat> S&P 500's not looking too hot. This does look like it could head lower. We've got bigger selling pressure days through here. And we've broken the upward trend line and this very well could go lower. Uh, I think that's probably gonna wor work out pretty well with interest rates going higher. We've got the NASDAQ also uh, signaling that it could potentially go lower. Not much of a bounce with buying pressure, big selling candlesticks uh, all over this thing. Uh, and we've broken the uptrend line. So I do think we could head lower for NASDAQ and S&P 500. That could have an impact on other sectors as well. Just keep that in mind. Merging markets holding on uh, right at support. We've got XHB holding on, but I still think this could head lower if the interest rates were to go up. We've got our big selling pressure candlesticks there and a kind of a rolling over of the home builders. Moo heading down, we're still above support. It does look like we've got some sort of pattern that is being formed here. Um, let me draw that in here with a little bit more um, of a straight edge, so to speak. There it is, there's your pattern. Let's watch it and see what happens. We've got <clears throat> copper moving sideways, we're at support, still within the pattern. Doesn't know which direction it wants to go. We've got iron ore uh, holding on. I think iron ore looks really strong here. I think we could see a big move to the upside mm -hmm. in iron ore. We've got nickel slightly lower. Again, I'm not touching nickel. I don't like, there's no There's no green army here. I, I wouldn't, I'd just wait. Aluminum up. About a percent right in the corner here. We're just squeezing in the corner. We'll see which direction we go. Baltic dry index looks fantastic. This thing looks like it wants to launch to the upside. So Baltic is probably one of the best looking charts uh, in the game here uh, with uranium. <clears throat> coal futures right at that support level. I like it where it's at for coal. And that's a retest of this basing period. So a breakout and then a retest. And then Bitcoin up 0.87% uh, with the big momentum reversal day with the big wick at the top. Ethereum, the same thing. Um, I, I don't like the way these charts necessarily look. They're, it's difficult to see which direction this wants to go. Now, obviously, you can throw in trend lines. You can say that we've broken that trend line there. We could be heading lower. Very well could. Uh, and there's another trend line that we broke here that also broke down and we could easily go lower if the sellers want to push it here. So again, I think it's all tied to interest rates. <clears throat> if interest rates break to the upside, overall stock markets lower, Ethereum, Bitcoin lower is my guess. We'll see oil be resilient. I think we'll go higher with oil. Um, gold and silver, I'm not too sure on. They're squeezing up, same with copper, everything's squeezing in that corner. Generally, they do well in a rising interest rate environment, copper and base metals and all that stuff, if we get a break to the upside. Um, but here's the thing, though. Are the interest rates being driven by the economy? Is it being driven by inflation? Generally, a strong lending environment is driven, it is accompanied with a rising interest rate environment. I don't know if we've got a strong lending environment. I think we're okay, but we're not strong. I also don't know, if, I don't think the economy is strong necessarily either. Um, so interesting market dynamics going on. And what I do when we get these conflicting data is I just wait, wait, there's nothing I can do. There's got to be a cleaner picture. And I usually, if, if you want to like trade, you want to see an alignment. You want everything to kind of go in alignment. Right now, things are kind of out of alignment and kind of misaligned uh, to some degree because uh, there's some conflicting data on bond prices, DXY, and yields. Uh, it's much easier to make calls when everything aligns. Uh, but if I were to take a guess on just what everything's doing, I think rates are going to go up still. I think they're going to break to the upside if I were to make a bet. I'm not making a bet with any of the money. I'm just saying if I were to make a guess, they're going to go up because Ethereum's broken to the downside. Bitcoin's broken to the downside. 
Uh, we have seen NASDAQ and S&P break to the downside. We've got nice big patterns that look like they want to break to the upside for yields. And these guys have already broken down. So it's almost like people are positioning before the break of yields. That's my take, guys. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you guys need any help, there's still that 50% discount uh, called September is the coupon code. If you want to get 50% off the first month in the uh, Platinum Monthly. All right, guys. We'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.